Hey everyone, Nigel and Luke here, and welcome to part three of our list covering viewer suggested cases. If you haven't seen parts one and two, be sure to check them out first. We'll be sure to leave a link in the description below. As always, don't forget to like and subscribe to Crime Zone for more true crime content like this. It really helps us to continue building the channel. With that out of the way, here is the final part of three interesting cases that were suggested by you. In the early morning hours of July 2nd, 1989, 30-year-old Barbara Miller of Sunbury, Pennsylvania vanished without a trace. Her case would become the subject of a mystery spanning more than three decades, one which continues to be investigated to this day. Barbara left her home on July 1st to attend her best friend's wedding in the nearby town of Mifflinburg later that day. Her 14-year-old son, Eddie, would later tell investigators that his mother's decision to go to the wedding had caused an argument between her and her ex-boyfriend, Mike Egan. Barbara had wanted to attend the wedding, and Mike, who had not been invited, wanted them to spend the day together. Though whether Barbara even made it to the ceremony that day is the subject of some dispute, most sources agree that she was there, and that items she received from the wedding were later discovered back at her home. It is believed that she returned home briefly on July 2nd to drop some things off, and was last seen heading to the wedding's reception. However, Barbara's friends would claim that she never arrived. The last person to officially report seeing Barbara alive was Mike Egan. Egan reported Barbara missing on July 5th, saying that he had seen her getting into a vehicle earlier with two men who were on their way to a motorcycle rally in Woolrich. Almost immediately, Egan became a suspect in Barbara's disappearance. Not only was he the last person to claim to see Barbara alive, but he reportedly moved into her house shortly after her disappearance. He also had a criminal record. He had been convicted of extortion while working as an officer for the Sunbury Police Department and had served several years in prison before being paroled in 1988. Adding further speculation was the fact that Barbara had complained about Egan to her friends and the police in the months before she went missing. However, other strange details surrounding Barbara's disappearance soon emerged. Before she had gone missing, she had reportedly been working as a police informant concerning local drug activity. In fact, it was known both by those close to her and the police that Barbara had received death threats in the weeks leading up to her disappearance. Strangely though, she had then abruptly informed police that the situation had been handled and even requested that they give her back threatening letters she had submitted to them as proof that she had been harassed. Some reports also state that prior to going missing, Barbara had gone around to the homes of several friends in a similar fashion and retrieved letters she had left with them in case anything should happen to her. Despite all these bizarre details, investigators were able to make little headway in the case. No conclusive evidence of Barbara's whereabouts were uncovered and the case soon went cold. It would stay that way until 2002, when Barbara's disappearance was re-examined by members of the Sunbury Police Department. Following tips from several witnesses, investigators searched a number of locations around Sunbury, including a water-filled strip mine along the Susquehanna River and some caves along Route 147 on the outskirts of the city. Although none of these searches resulted in the discovery of Barbara's remains, a county judge still declared her legally dead in October of 2002, and her case was officially declared a homicide. Following the declaration, Barbara's case again fell into a period of stagnation more than a decade long, until it was eventually picked up in 2016 by police chief Tim Miller. Miller, who is not related to Barbara, seemed optimistic about solving the case, and appeared to have new evidence that would move the investigation further along. A house on Front Street in the town of Milton became a particular subject of interest, and police soon revealed that they had obtained a search warrant for the property. According to Miller, Sunbury police had received a tip that led them to believe that Barbara's remains could be located somewhere in the house. Interestingly, at the time of Barbara's disappearance, the home had been rented by Mike Egan's sister, Kathy Reitenbach. Police had also received statements from several people who knew Egan, 
who told them that he would get high on cocaine and drive by the house to, quote, check on his old lady. A man that Kathy had been romantically involved with at the time, named Harry Catherman, similarly became the subject of interest in the investigation after police received reports that Catherman had once told somebody that if they failed to pay a drug debt, they would, quote, end up just like Barbara did in Kathy's basement. In June of 2017, investigators performed a week-long dig at the property, focusing on a suspicious-looking area of concrete wall located in the basement that appeared to be hand-mixed. They removed a three-ton slab of concrete from the basement, as well as a large amount of soil from the surrounding area. Two months later, police conducted another search of Barbara's old house, followed by a search of a pond in northern Northumberland County, located between Montenden and Lewisburg. A team of divers were able to recover a metal barrel from the pond, which police announced that they had been searching for in connection with the case. All of the recovered evidence from the three locations was reportedly sent for testing, after which police offered few updates about their findings. In 2019, it was announced that female bone fragments had been found inside the concrete taken from the home in Milton, but that DNA testing had yet to be concluded. This was the last major announcement investigators released regarding the evidence. Though it can take time for DNA testing on these kinds of samples to be thoroughly conducted, it seems as though there might be another reason why the public has received little information so far. Before he resigned as Sunbury Police Chief in July of 2018, Tim Miller announced that he believed Barbara's death was related to another case from Northumberland County, the 1986 killing of Ricky Wolfe. Wolfe had been handcuffed and beaten to death near a boat launch along the Susquehanna River over a drug dispute. Two men were ultimately convicted of his murder, but in the years since, their involvement in the crime has been questioned. Their convictions were vacated in 2004 after it was discovered that a witness had falsely testified for the prosecution at their original trials. Both men have continued to maintain their innocence, but in 2006 agreed to plead no contest to charges of conspiracy to commit third-degree murder at their second trial in exchange for being released from prison after 17 years. Since being released, one of the men, Scott Schaefer, has repeatedly claimed that Barbara Miller was killed because of her knowledge about the local drug trade, and because she had incriminating evidence about who really killed Ricky Wolf. He told investigators that she had left a message on his answering machine shortly before her disappearance, saying that she had information that would exonerate him. However, that tape has never been located. Today, the Barbara Miller case remains a confusing and mysterious web of unanswered questions. Was Barbara indeed killed to silence what she knew about the city's drug trade? What, if any involvement did Mike Egan, Harry Catherman, and Kathy Reitenbach have in Barbara's disappearance? And most of all, what has become of the seemingly promising evidence that police discovered that many believe could be Barbara's remains? Unfortunately, it doesn't look like there are any clear answers to be had at the present time. Hopefully, investigators will soon hit a break in the case and will update the public with their findings. After more than 30 years, it would be amazing for Barbara's family to finally get the answers that they deserve. That brings us to the end of our list. Would you like us to cover more cases from our list of viewer suggestions? Be sure to let us know in the comment section below. As always, if you enjoyed our video, don't forget to like and subscribe to Crime Zone for more true crime content like this, making sure to hit the notification bell to stay up to date with our latest releases. Thank you for watching.